Hello, welcome to Sober and Intuitive Tarot. Thank you very, very much for being here. Before I get started, I just wanted to share a couple of things. On February 23rd, I, we, celebrated my fifth year anniversary here on YouTube. I don't know where the time went, but it, it sure went somewhere. Um, it's a little channel, you know, I just got over 10,000 subscribers. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not up there with the 30s and 40s and 50s thousand subscribers, and I'm really okay with that. I have done um, just shy, I think this one or the next one is going to be my 2000th video, um, and just shy of 4 million views. So thank you very, very much for all of you who have been on this amazing journey with me. And the, for the new the new people, the new people who are here, um, I really hope that you enjoy the Soul Print community. Um, so thank you. Just big, big thank yous to everyone. Now, unfortunately, we're also celebrating a not so wonderful anniversary, which is the two-year anniversary of Russia invading Ukraine and, you know, starting this horrific, horrific war. Um, I don't know that anybody thought it would last this long, um, but it has. And the Ukrainian people have proven to be <laughs> unbelievably resilient. Um, you know, they have just... You know, this is a David and Goliath kind of story, right? I mean, they went up against Russia, and yeah, listen, they've taken a beating. But you know what? So is Russia. They have held their own. And, you know, it's sort of remarkable um, to, have, to have seen the kind of courage and bravery and, and stamina um, that that country and the people of that country have shown. So today I want to take a look at Ukraine and see if we can see um, kind of how things are going, you know, if they're going to end, when they're going to end. Um, I did see a little blurb that apparently Zelensky has said that he um, hopes to present a peace plan to Russia in the spring. So, you know, that's around the corner. Um, I think that Russia, uh, the Ukraine is probably going to have to give up some of its land because what Russia wants is to get to that water, right? And so I think that there may be sort of a strip of uh, eastern Ukraine that may end up becoming um, Russian territory so that they have a, a through way to get to um, the ocean, shipping lanes, etc. So let's take a look and see what we can see about Ukraine, its people, and this unbelievably cruel war that has been visited upon them. Okay. Don't forget to um, put any questions you have for Pendulum Friday in the comment section below. And the amazing Joyce compiles them all for me and prints them off to me so that um, I can do my videos. Right. Here we go. Um. Ukraine war trajectory, Ukraine war trajectory, Ukraine war trajectory. We're starting off with the Eight of Swords. 
Kind of not surprising, right? Um, Ukraine has been attacked by, frankly, a country that sort of, I don't think, was their enemy. I mean, you know, Ukraine, Russia, Poland, Austria, they're all sort of part of a bundle and people travel back and forth. All of those countries have um, sort of a blend of people, languages, customs from all the other countries around them. Um, but they've definitely been put in a position where they have had no choice but to fight to the very, very best of their ability and strength against this this attack and it's it just that's exactly what it is it is a land grab by somebody who um i don't know maybe i think is a little insane but for sure um is a bully and for sure thinks that his life purpose is to get the old ussr back uh together again except nobody wants to be back in the old ussr because it wasn't very nice they have fought they have fought a an amazing amazing battle over a massive challenge and they have held their own um right now you know they have both the two and the three of wands right so this is about a couple things one it's about looking forward um, trying to figure out how to, you know, bring this war already to some sort of a conclusion or resolution. It is also of, about Zelensky communicating, communicating to his own people, communicating to the world, standing up strong and straight and recognizing that it plays a huge role in, in this situation because if Russia takes Ukraine, it will go after a whole bunch of other countries, um, particularly the ones that surround Russia right now, whether they're democracies or they're not democracies, he's going to go in there and he's going to do that whole land grab thing again. And so there is a recognition that the war that Ukraine and Zelensky fight is not just for Ukraine. It is for all of us because, let me tell you, the tip of Russia or one end, the, the extreme west of Russia, um, it's not all that far away from Alaska. Um, obviously, if it's not far away from Alaska, it's really close to Canada. What does Canada have? Well, aside from being sort of a breadbasket, we also have oil. So it's not like, oh, you know, it's just it's over there and we don't have to worry about it because it's, it's over there. No, no, he's not going to be happy until he grabs it all. And the war that Zelensky and those brave people are fighting are for all of us, which is why all of us need to be concerned. And all of us need to be, you know, sending our love, our light, our energy, encouraging our own governments to do the right thing and do what needs to be done. Unfortunately, I do see, I do see some sort of a, sort of, I see Ukraine walking away. And I think what it's walking away from is some pieces of its land. I sincerely, sincerely hope not. But that's my read on it right now. And it's going to create like confusion. And, you know, people are going to be, but I don't want to be living in Russia. I want to be living in Ukraine. And it, it, it will sort. Okay. I think this is one of those situations where there's not going to be a true victory. Honestly, I don't know that there ever is in a warlike situation. But 
one of the things that this has done, as I said, is it has made it very clear to other countries that they are not as invincible um, as they like to think they are. When you, you know, are dealing with somebody who doesn't acknowledge international rules, who, who just chooses to believe that they're above and beyond, um, you're dealing with kind of a monster that is not so easy, you know, to corral. Now, um, there have been a, a, a lot of countries doing a lot of things. People in the United States don't tend to hear <laughs> about what other countries are doing and, and contributing. But um, those that have been able to have been helping Ukraine in many, many ways. The reality, however, is that a significant chunk of um, what Ukraine needs comes from the United States. One of the things that I absolutely will never understand is why, when, you know, when the U.S. says we're going to send you, I don't know, five billion whatevers, right? It's the United States that makes the five billion whatevers and then sends it. So, the people who were working in those plants, in those areas, they have that prosperity that is coming. It's not like, like the U.S. writes them a blank check and says, here, go buy some supplies. So people who were yelling and screaming about it's none of our business, well, you know what, maybe you should tell that to all the factory workers whose very livelihood has been probably benefited from the fact that they are making um, unfortunately, but the necessities of war. So it, it's always confused me why, um, you know, the so many people in the United States don't get that. Now, the mega crowd, I absolutely get that, right? Because Putin, because Putin has Trump on a string and Trump says, whatever you want, master. And then he tells his people and there you have it, which is how we ended up with this absolute ridiculous stalemate in House of Representatives with that um, choir boy Johnson, okay? That's what he looks like. He just looks like a choir boy. You know, the kind that normally would stick a firecracker up somebody's butt. Anyways, I digress. This is the thing. I don't know how. I don't know enough about the legal political wranglings that can go on. Um, but it very much feels like one way or the other, Biden is going to get what he wants. He is going to, um, I know that there's different, different things that they can do to force a vote. And hopefully there are at least some people in the Republican Party who are going to do the right thing. There's also, to be fair, people in the Democrat Party um, who are upset because the package that they're trying to get through also provides aid to Israel. And there are Palestinians um, who are very angry about that. And I'm not getting into that situation. I'm just saying that this is a time where um, there needs to be a mindset that is higher than the immediate, right? People have to look at the big picture um, and, and try to see where this works out. I have said before that I believe that um, Israel and Palestine are going to end up somehow um, sort of, I don't know, like splitting the land. They're gonna do something so that um, there is at least some sort of a ongoing peace. Um, and it's it's gonna be a compromise. Nobody's gonna be happy about the end result, but that's how it is. And I'm moving off of that topic. Um, once um, that money starts flowing from the United States in connection with all the other things that are being sent in from various parts of the the globe, things are going to start moving forward. I have long seen um, an attack on, I think it's the Kremlin, um, coming from the air, all right? 
I don't know when. I don't know if it's still in play. But I've definitely seen sort of some insult to Russia, the country of Russia. And it feels that that creates um, more of a... Um, necessity to talk about peace plans, to sort of get it together and stop what's going on. Um, there's going to be a tremendous amount of support that continues to fall in for Ukraine. And ultimately, I think ultimately, Putin is not going to get his wish of taking everything back in time to the USSR. And ultimately, Ukraine will have the support that they need and require to put this this thing on at least some a better even footing so that um, there can be some sort of a talk to resolution. But I mean, that's the thing about war. Um, you, you know, this isn't, I don't know, however many hundreds of years ago that, you know, some country invaded another country and that, that was just how it was and they took over the whole country. That doesn't work that way now. Um, and there's never, ever a clear winner. And so... At some point, there has to be some kind of a negotiated sort of settlement. Um, but until Russia feels like they are getting injured, um, they're not going to be hurting to do anything. And you know what? There's sanctions that are being placed on them over this spy, this, you know, the whole per the guy who was feeding the the it's the dumb Republicans the information about Joe Biden and the five million dollars that never actually existed. Um, but Russia will continue. There's going to be continuing stuff that comes out. I mean, the whole um, Navalny thing, right? I mean, talk about how bad does Russia look with that. So it's going to continue to get sort of punched in the face, but... We have to understand that there are still trading partners that Russia is dealing with, including, I believe it's India, and they have been shipping them oil. And Russia has made, I believe it's billions of dollars over the sale of this oil. So, yeah, you have all these countries with sanctions, but I'm not sure that it hurts enough. So that's where we are. I have to say, I'm just going to ask Spirit to sort of just give me some clarity here on what we can expect, what the energy is like. Okay, so what they're saying is definitely by March, April, May, the springtime that those months, um, it definitely feels like there's going to be some negotiations, that kind of thing. It may not actually end up resolving until... Um, like six months, like so September or so. But there's definitely um, sort of um, it's sort of the war coming to a close. It does not feel like a, um, a really strong and settled close, but it definitely feels like one that is going to hold. Um, because there is some concern about Putin, you know, how long he's going to be around, what plot can be against him. Um, I'm not getting any clarity right now about whether that is part of the reason that things are able to move forward, but there's definitely energy that is shifting. What they're showing me is that, that almost like Ukraine is going to get like a, a vitamin shot, right? It's going to boost them right up. They're going to do what they need to do. It very much feels like Russia's not going to appreciate the insult and things will start moving forward from there. Um, that's what I know. Slava Ukraine, okay? Um, everybody take a moment. If you wish, please just send out some good energy and a prayer. And not only to Zelensky in Ukraine, but to the idiots in the House of Representatives so that whatever needs to be circumvented, get circumvented so the money starts flowing. That's what I know. Thank you very, very much for being here. Um, take good care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.